Hi and welcome to Awesome Reviews. Today I have for you the top 10 horror movies that you should watch on Netflix. I really put a lot of time on this video. I watched a ton of horror movies on Netflix, some of them really bad. So hopefully you'll like the list. Again, I did not watch every horror movie on Netflix because that would take me forever. So if you have any cool horror movies that you watched on Netflix, please tell me about them because I really love horror movies. And I would like to know if they are awesome movies that I haven't checked out. So if your awesome favorite horror movie on Netflix is not on this list, please tell me about them because I would love to watch them. Anyway, let's get started with the top 10 horror movies that you should be watching on Netflix. The first movie is The Caller. When troubled divorcee Mary Key sets up a home in her new apartment, she stumbles across an old telephone which she quickly falls in love with. Struck by its antique charm, she gives it pride of place in her home. Before long, Mary begins to receive strange phone calls from a mysterious unknown caller. Over time, she discovers that the caller is actually a woman named Rose, and the two strike up an unlikely friendship. However, when Rose claims to be calling from the past, Mary begins to question her new friend's motives. As Rose's phone calls become ever more disturbing, Mary's sense of terror escalates. Feeling haunted in her own home, she cuts all contact with Rose. Rose, enraged by Mary's betrayal, threatens to exact her terrible revenge, not on Mary in the present, but on Mary as a child in the past. Mary finally realizes that she will have to kill Rose in order to save herself. But how can she kill someone living in the past? And what will happen to her if she fails to do so? The second movie is The Awakening. This movie is set in 1921 England where Florence Cathcart is a published author on supernatural hoaxes who works with the police to expose con artists and debunk supernatural phenomenon. Having begun her foray into her profession upon the death of her lover in World War I, this job is very dear to her. Upon a visit from Robert Mallory, a teacher from a boarding school with the request to investigate the recent death of a student and how it is related to sightings of a ghost of a child. She travels to the school hoping to explain the sightings and the death. The ghostly sightings are at first taught to be a prank played by one of the boys at the school. While Florence and Robert start to develop a mutual attraction, the school is closed for holidays with the only occupants being Robert, Florence, Maud, the husband keeper and Tom, a lonely orphan child. Once everyone leaves, strange supernatural phenomena began to happen in the school and Florence is forced to stay and solve the mystery that awaits her at night. The third movie is John Dies at the End. Framed as a series of flashbacks being related to a skeptical reporter, John Dies at the End is a story of what happens when 20-something slacker Dave and his friend John discover a drug called soy sauce, which forever alters their senses and perceptions of reality. What happens is not so easily explained, but it involves time travel and zombie-like pod people whose bodies have been taken over by a parasitic white fuzz from another dimension. Yep. Throw that in a blender along with a kind of hipster humor familiar to the fans of Tim and Eric's billion dollar movie, and you've got a cocktail with a stoner e midnight movie vibe. It makes for a formidable appetizer, working up an appetite in its audience that creates an ironic detachment from the wholesale cannibalization of its own cheesy pop culture goodness. It is definitely a ride that you will, might want to be a little bit high to watch. Go check it out. Fourth, The Moth Diaries. Acclaimed director Mary Heron, who directed American Psycho, returns with a chilling story of Rebecca, a young girl hunted by her father's suicide, who decides to enroll in, the, in an elite boarding school for girls. 
Before long, Rebecca's friendship with the popular girl Lucy is shattered by the arrival of a dark and mysterious new student named Ernessa. Rebecca, whose overtures of concern are rejected by Lucy, finds herself lost and confused. Rebecca starts to suspect that Ernessa is a vampire, but despite the suspicious deaths that begin to occur, her fears are treated as simple girlish jealousy. As the bodies of young girls pile up, and the line between reality and the supernatural start to blur, Rebecca decides to take matters into her own hands and get rid of Ernessa. But Ernessa may have plans of her own herself. Fifth, The Hall, the 2001 one, because there's another one that has the same name, but it's completely different, so this one is the 2001. Liz Dunn returns to her boarding school bloodied and in shock. The police are called immediately. In shock, Liz tells her story to the psychiatrist appointed by the court, Dr. Philippa Horwood. The plan was that she and three more students would hide inside a wartime bunker because they wanted to avoid a school excursion to Wells. They also did not want to spend the holidays with their parents. The three other runaways are popular and successful, but Liz is the school's outcast. She was hoping that the time in the vault with Mike Steele would make him forget his girlfriend, the popular Frances Altman Smith. Jeff, Mike's best friend, was also in the bunker. The excursion people would think they were at home on holidays, and the students' parents would think that they were in Wells. Nerdy Martin Taylor, supposedly Liz's only friend, was supposed to lock the exit to the bunker, go home to his family. When he returned three days later, he would unlock the door, they would all go back to school. However, at the end of the three days, Martin never showed up to let them out. At this point, they all freaked out and began to die one at a time. Six, Grave Encounters. Lance Preston and the crew of Grave Encounters, a ghost hunting reality TV show, are shooting an episode inside the abandoned Collingwood Psychiatric Hospital, where unexplained phenomena has been reported for years. All in the name of good television, they voluntarily locked themselves inside the building for the night and began a paranormal investigation, capturing everything on camera. They quickly realize, however, that the building is more than just haunted, it is alive, and it has no intention of ever letting them leave. They find themselves lost in a labyrinth maze of endless hallways and corridors, terrorized by the ghosts of former patients. They soon begin to question their own sanity, going deeper and deeper into the depths of madness ultimately discovering the truth behind the hospital's dark past and taping what turns out to be their final episode. Seventh, The Bleeding House. The Bleeding House is a low-budget psychological horror story that is likely to be a bit divisive depending on your expectations. Though not without a fair share of gruesome imagery, the film's greatest strength is its ambition, not just a typical hack and slash. The villain of this piece voices an existential narrative about the nature of humanity and its salvation. The film is quiet and contemplative, and even at its most extreme, so practically matter of fact about its bloodletting. There is almost a gleeful unpleasantness to the proceedings that make this far creepier than actually scary. So if you're looking for a fast-paced narrative of thrills and chills, this may not satisfy your cravings. If, however, you are content with a slow build drama of increasing unease, there is a lot to recommend the film, despite its obvious budgetary constraints, but it will definitely entertain you. Number 8. White. The film opens with a girl group called Pink Dolls about to perform in a televised competition. 
Their ad flops and they lose to the more mainstream girl group called Pure. They move into a new studio where they hope to practice and record their next hit and finally make it to the top. One of the members of the group discovers a tape in the studio entitled White, which turns out to be an old unreleased music video that her manager thinks might have the right moves and addictive tune to pave the way for the group's success. Since the rights to the song are unknown, the copyright issues are sidelined, and their manager gives the okay for them to begin deconstructing the video for their next performance. They perform White on stage, becoming an overnight sensation. And with the rise in popularity, the girls find themselves becoming resentful and ruled by their desire for the chance to be promoted as the lead, who will now be singled out by wearing a white wig and costume. But soon, the song proves to be sinister, and each began to suffer a terrible death. Number 9. Pontypool. 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 The film is set in a radio station in Pontypool, a small village in Ontario, Canada, where one day the morning team starts taking reports of extreme, bloody incidents of violence occurring in town. As the story unfolds, the radio staff soon realizes that the violence that is ripping society apart is due to a virus being spread through the English language. That, in turn, poses a problem for a yappy radio jock and his staff holed up in the broadcast booth housed in the basement of the town's abundant church as a slaughter rages beyond its walls. But how can they survive? The virus, when talking itself, could turn them into bloodthirsty monsters. And number 10, the last one. And this one is called Let the Right One In. In the suburb of Blackburg in Stockholm, a 12 year old named Oscar is a lonely and outcast boy bullied in school by Connie and two other classroom mates. At home, Oscar dreams on revenge in the trio of bullies. He befriends his 12 year old next door neighbor named Eli that only appears during the night in the playground of their building. Meanwhile, Eli's father is a serial killer who drains the blood of his victims to supply Eli so she doesn't have to kill. Eli advises Oscar to react to Connie by fighting back. However, he soon discovers that she is a vampire and he feels fear and love for the girl at the same time. They develop a friendship that is very deep. And those were the top 10 horror movies that you should go and watch on Netflix right now if you haven't watched them already. Uh, well, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the list and go watch them. Bye!